Okay, so my task for today is to attach this milk crate onto this bike right here. So this black bike here is pretty much what I'm trying to replicate today with the green one. Uh, I've been riding this bike with a milk crate on the back for over two years now and it's been performing really, really well. Uh, the method I use to attach it has been very effective. The milk crate doesn't budge at all on the stand. Uh, so I'm going to try and do things on the green one as much the same as I can so that I get the same effect on this one. So what I used on this one to attach it is just string, basic everyday nylon string that I've wrapped through and around every single every single hole that comes in contact with the bars of the rack and I pulled it really 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 tight and tied it off lots of times made sure it was nice and tight and very sturdy on there it's not going to move anywhere um, which is definitely a good thing when you're carrying you know fifty sixty dollars worth of groceries in the back you know you don't want to you don't want to be losing that stuff so the type of string I'm going to be using today is this stuff I've never used it before I got it from the dollar store yesterday I'm hoping it's going to be nice and strong. It looks like it's durable, like it's not going to fray too much. I would have liked to have used the same string that I used for doing the first milk crate, you know, two years ago, but I don't have any of that left. I, I just got used up this fall, unfortunately. But I'm hoping this stuff will do just as good a job. It's it's not as thick as the other stuff, but you know, I figure that with it. Uh, the, with the nature of this job, you're, you can wrap the string around as many times as necessary. So we'll just wrap it around lots of times and hopefully it'll be nice and strong. In terms of getting milk crates, they don't seem to be for sale anywhere, unfortunately. You know, you can't just walk into a store and buy them. If you could, I would definitely buy them because I think they're really useful for so many different things. But uh, until, that's, until that's possible, uh, you just have to borrow them and uh, you know return them when you're done. So you want to make sure when you put the milk crate on that you get it pretty much as centered as you possibly can. This one's fairly easy because there's a center bar on the rack. So you can count the number of, of lengths in the grate at the bottom. And I figured out that this is the center here. So we line that up with center bar and then you got it centered and I always try and push the milk crate as far forward as I as I can see if you have the milk crate pushed back so it's not touching the seat then it extends way way out past where the rack is so any weight on there is being pushed right on the plastic and the plastic will probably break so I push it as far forward as it goes so that there's only a small distance that the plastics is being pushed on. So before we start winding the string around we gotta tie it off somewhere. So I've decided that I'm going to wrap around this middle bar first. So I'm gonna tie it off right around here. Mm. Really feel the stretch in the string. It's starting to worry me a little bit. So after you've got a loop started like I've got here after you've got one loop, your second loop comes around and you can cross them over. So it'll interlock. And uh, when you pull it tight, it'll stay tight as you do more loops around. This job takes quite a long time, so be patient. Every loop I do around, I'm going to interlock it in so that just going to keep getting tighter and tighter every time we go around. So once you've gone around a few times and you're ready to move on to the next one, you don't need to tie it or anything because the locking method is working well, but you do want to keep the string tight when you move on to the next one. So 
So do it in such a way that it crosses on the bottom and then you come through this part of the hole here so that when you pull it, it's going to be pulling the knot from the, the last knot and uh, it'll keep it nice and tight. So let's pull that, make sure it's tight. Come up and loop around again. Then you can do your locking technique. Right there like that. Pull tight. And my third lock. So that's what those look like from above. So I've now got five of them done. And my string is pretty short now, so I'm just gonna do a reef knot and tie another string on the end of it and continue as I'm going. Well, I've got all the middle done now. And I'm just going to start working my way back up the right side. Um, I've, I've, no, I've remembered that doing this part back here, having a pair of pliers handy is, is useful because sometimes you you got to go up and under and you got to grab it. So. Um, uh, but anyways, it's feeling really sturdy so far. It's not really moving around at all. Uh, so I'm just going to finish up, move down that side. And, uh, and then I'm going to start working on these cross pieces, which are pretty much the most important because uh, the side-to-side -side motion is important because you know, you've got a lot of weight that's high in the air, so it, it can teeter back and forth. But uh, you, know, you slam on the brakes, you don't want this thing sliding too far that way, although the seat is um, going to prevent it from doing that, or but if you're accelerating you don't want your whole load to, to slide off the back. So anyways I'll continue and uh, I'll show my progress. So now we've got the whole one side finished and I've just started to do the top and as I said before um, doing the ones that go across are very important because uh, a lot of motion when you're stopping and starting is in that direction so as you can see, I really went to town here with lots of lots of loops around there, and I'm going to continue to do that as I go across there. And I'm going to do the same thing when I get down to this bar down here. And uh, so every every time I take about two meters or so of of string, and I just tie it onto the end of what I've got. And uh, this string I've I've noticed uh, and I've noticed with lots of other strings that are made of synthetic material. Um, as soon as you cut them the end just frays all over the place. So uh, what I've been doing is uh, I use the lighter to cut the string instead of the scissors and then um, the ends are melted and they're not frayed all over the place. Another piece of advice I'd have is to try and get some sort of a chair you can sit at while you're working at this because uh, you know standing in you're sort of in a funny little crouched uh, position while you're working on this uh, which is kind of hard on the back, or at least it's hard on my back. Um, so uh, using a stool or chair uh, has been helping me for that. Anyways, I'm going to uh, continue working, and uh, I'll update you from the next stop. Well, I've got all my loose in place now, though it has taken me more than two hours. But, uh, I mean, this thing's not going anywhere for sure. Got a big factor of safety here because you know, well, you're gonna have stuff in the bottom of here that's gonna be brushing up against these pieces of string, so um, it's gonna weaken over time, obviously. So, to make it last the most amount of time, we put lots and lots of string on. So, the only thing left here is to make sure we tie down this end so it doesn't start to unravel itself. Okay, so I just passed that string you just saw a moment ago underneath to the bottom here. And to tie it off, I'm going to tie it using this uh, cross string that I put there not too long ago. And this is where having pliers is useful. Oh. Right. Just got to make sure you pull it out nice and tight.
just like that. Do that a few more times. Okay, now that I got it tied on there, I'm going to tie it again using that one there, just for some extra security. Do the same thing. All right, nice tie just like that. And now all we've got left is to get rid of this end of string. And like I said before, it frays at the end if you don't do this. And there you have it. And like I was saying before, this is very sturdy. Pick the bike up with it, shake it around, and that's not going anywhere. Now all I've got to do is put some weight in it and go for a test ride. Well, I couldn't really find anything too heavy for running this test, uh, but I know that this bike is not going to carry too much weight, or I'm planning on not putting too much in it. But we managed to find some full bottle of ketchup, a jar of peanut butter, some potatoes, and a bag of apples. So let's take it for a little test ride. Well that concludes my tutorial of putting a milk crate on a bike, thanks for watching.